Hello, I'm Michelle Paver, and I want to read you the first scene from my new book, Viper's Daughter. So, if you're sitting comfortably, let me take you back 6,000 years to when the land was one vast forest. A bat flitted past Torak as he drew an arrow from his quiver. Wolf raised his muzzle and sniffed the breeze. He glanced at Torak, then into the thicket. There. They crept between tangled alders, Torak squelching knee-deep in black water, Wolf's big paws making no sound. Torak picked a hair off a twig, coarse, reddish-brown. Elk calves are reddish-brown. The calf's mother must have hidden it in the thicket while she went to graze. Torak glanced over his shoulder at the lake. Elk can swim deep under water. She could be anywhere, diving to the bottom to uproot water lilies with her tongue. Wolf froze, paw raised, ears rammed forwards. Dimly through the trees, Torak made out a calf-shaped darkness. The calf whined and wobbled to its feet. It was as tall as a horse. One chop of its front hooves could split his skull. As Torak knocked the arrow to his bow, Wolf gave a warning, off, and the mother, ex the mother elk exploded from the lake in a chaos of white water and flailing hooves. Torak dodged. She cracked a trunk by his head. Wolf leapt and sank his fangs into her pendulous nose. She swung him high. He clung on. Torak couldn't get a clean shot, couldn't risk hitting his pack brother. With a twist and a heave, the elk sent Wolf flying. He hit a tree with a yelp. Torak floundered towards him. Mother and calf had disappeared into the forest. Groggily, Wolf lurched to his feet and wagged his tail. Torak gave a shaky laugh. That was close. Wren would tease him when she heard how he'd nearly been brained by an elk. As he was leaving the thicket, he saw a Willow Clan hunting party, two men and two women, bearing a roebuck's quartered carcass. Wolf vanished into the forest, as he did when strangers approached, but Torak put his fists to his chest in friendship. On impulse, he asked if they'd seen his mate. Wren of the Raven Clan, he called. She's been to see them, but she's coming back today. One of the men turned, and in the dusk, his clan tattoos were stark, three willow leaves between his eyes, like a permanent frown. Saw her a couple of days ago, he called back. Long way down river. Oh, that it wasn't her, the ravens are camped up river. The man's frown became real. I know who I saw. Red hair, her uncle's Finn Kedin, the raven leader. Summer before last, she mated with the spirit walker, the boy who talks to wolves. That would be you. His eyes narrowed, and he touched a bone amulet in his jerkin. Stay away. Looked like she was going on a journey, a woman sneered. She was paddling a canoe, had a pack and a sleeping sack. Torak bristled. Then it definitely wasn't her. The woman sniggered. <laughs> Maybe she's tired of you. Laughing, they went on their way. Torak was still irritated when he reached camp. It was in darkness, no welcoming firelight and no wren. Neither Wolf nor his mate Darkfur had returned from the hunt, but the cubs pounced on Torak, leaping at his chest and whining for food, while their older brother Pebble gave him a distracted greeting. Pebble took his cub-watching duties seriously and rarely relaxed. In the shelter, Torak found the double sleeping sack as he'd left it, although slightly chewed. He felt a twinge of unease. It was the cloudberry moon, when parts of the river were still choked with salmon, and salmon means bears. Wren said Torek worried too much about bears. Torek said she would worry too, if her father had been killed by one. Ah, but she could look after herself. She was the best shot in the forest with a bow and arrow. She'd be annoyed if he went to find her. The wind rose blowing thistle down in his face like summer snow. The pines stirred restlessly. They knew something was wrong. 
tracking was what Torak did best, and even by starlight he found Wren's three-day-old trail. To his alarm, it didn't lead towards the valley where her clan was camped, but down to the river Blackthorn where he and Wren kept their canoe. The canoe was gone. Drag marks and bent twigs told him that Wren had paddled down river, just as the willow man had said. She was going on a journey. She had a pack and a sleeping sack. This was all wrong. It couldn't be Wren. She would have had to make that gear in secret, scraping and sewing reindeer hides for the sleeping sack, weaving willow withes for the pack. She would have had to deceive Torak for days. No, no, it couldn't be true. Wren wouldn't do that. She wouldn't leave him without a word. But she had. Well, I'm afraid we're going to have to leave Torak and Wolf there. If you want to find out what happens, you're going to have to get your paws and a copy of Viper's Daughter. I really hope you enjoy it.